of God. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy unto God, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we will spend some time in that arena dealing with this topic of radical glorification and magnification. <clears throat> now, just by vernacular in and of itself, the adding of the concept or the word radical really is just for appearance. It's really just for the sake of how it sounds. To me, radical glorification and magnification sounds intense, mm -hmm. sounds out of the box. However, when we're talking about glorification and magnification of God, it needs no descriptor before it, right. Right. such as radical. If someone is living in a state of glorifying God or magnifying God, they already are radical. In other words, you cannot glorify God without being radical. Amen. You cannot magnify God without being, with, you cannot magnify God without being radical. So I, I just want you to be clear that there is no difference between glorifying God and radically glorifying Come on. God. Come on. If you are glorifying God, it is radical. Amen. If you are magnifying God, it is radical. So we don't want anyone to get tripped up with the topic that, that, we've, that we've selected by throwing in that word radical because there is no such thing as someone saying, look, well, I radically glorify God. And then someone else says, well, I just glorify. Mm -hmm. If you are glorified, you are radical in your existence as as a child of God. Let's go back to Romans chapter 12 and just pull out a few, a few elements within the text. So the, the goal of today, uh, this, this afternoon, is just to get on base with this series uh, so we can, we can start our process of, of moving forward. Now again, the, the, the Apostle Paul begins this portion of Romans chapter 12. Some of this we will look at uh, today from, from, from more uh, of, of an expository uh, approach than we will uh, a, tap, a topical or subject type of approach. But again, the Apostle Paul begins this portion of this epistle to the Christians there in Rome by saying, I beseech you, I urge you therefore, brother, it's important that we understand the love that is connected to what he's talking about. Everything that we see in scripture, it is about serious business. Mm -hmm. There is nothing half done. There is nothing that is mediocre. When God is giving out, giving out, giving out uh, some exhortation to us or some encouragement to us or, or a warning to us or, or issuing out some type of, of statement or passage or, or theological word that is steep or rooted in discipline or warning, nothing is half done about that. God means what he says. He doesn't just throw stuff out there and the concept behind it is, well, we'll do it if you want. We'll, we'll be there momentarily as well. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. That word brethren is adelphos, which means of the same womb. So he's saying in this conversation, I'm urging you, but also understand I love you. 
We are on the same team. We are from the same womb. Now, he wasn't necessarily talking to his biological family, but he was talking to his spiritual family, and he's saying, because we are of Christ, we are of the same womb. We are family, therefore I am urging you. Yes. I am beseeching you, therefore, brethren, Adelphos, those of you that are my spiritual kinfolk, he says, by the mercies of God, that you do something. I need you to do something. That's why the concept of, of radical is not necessary as a descriptor because in and of itself it is already radical. He says, you, you are my brethren, I love you, I'm urging you, by the mercies of God I need you to do something and what I need you to do is present your bodies. Yeah. Now we can get a little bit tripped up about this body. We've got to dress it a certain way. We got to do it up a certain way. We don't want to be touched a certain way. He's saying, check it out. I need you to take your body. Yes. This is something that goes with you everywhere you go. Right. In other words, I'm not saying go get something off the shelf at home and every now and then pick it up and then put it down and bring it with you tomorrow, but you don't have to bring it the next day. He says, present your bodies. And this is perpetual language. This is, this is not static language to where he's talking about this is a one-time act. Right. He's saying, I'm beseeching you, I love you, and this will happen by the mercies of God. In other words, God will be with us. That God is with us throughout this journey, but I need you to do something. I need you to present your bodies a living physia. A living sacrifice. Now what's interesting about that word sacrifice, I know we have, we have perhaps a bunch of notions that come to mind because all of us in multiple ways are engaged in something that is sacrificial. Yeah, well, Amen. Now, if, if, if you don't feel a loss or some type of pain or some type of discomfort when you do it, don't classify it as sacrificial. Amen. What makes it sacrificial is the fact that you feel like something is leaving you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That something is now out of your control. That is exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about. He's saying, I need you to start living a sacrificial lifestyle. I need you to start living out as a thysia. Now, now, one of the things that's very interesting about this terminology, sacrifice, from a Greek perspective, is that on its face, it means a victim. Mm -hmm. All right. He's saying, I need you to present your bodies as a living victim. Now let's bring in radical, because that's some radical stuff. Yeah. Who in the world wants to be victimized? Come on now. But when you look at the Jesus that we serve, Amen. he became a victim. Yeah. He became a victim yeah. so that you and I could be saved. So when God is telling us, I beseech you therefore, brethren, and that includes sisters as well, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living and a willing victim. Right. You signed up to be a Christian? Yeah. Are you sure you want to stay a Christian? Because he said, I need you to present your bodies as a living and a willing victim. Wow. You know the story about Abraham and Isaac? became a willing victim. Yeah. He became the literal living sacrifice. He was the victim laid atop the sacrificial board. Yeah. He was about to be killed and then and, and, and sacrificed by his father, but he became a willing yeah. victim. I don't know oftentimes if, if, if we, and I'm including myself in this, if we really understand how deep Christianity is. Mm. It ain't cute. No. And it's not about something that is appeasing either. Yeah. Uh, we can't mistake Christianity for comfort and plush and luxury. That's right. Jesus said the Son of Man has nowhere right. to lay his head. Right. Birds are better off than me. A fox is better off than me. You want to roll with me? Understand this is not about a life of luxury. No. Mm. Amen. Amen. What did we sign up for? What did I sign up for? Because if I thought 
it was going to be pluck and luxuriance. I misunderstood the text. Mm -hmm. right. 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 I misunderstood what this, now, now, the luxury is on the other side. Come on. He says, oh, you, you're going to see plush like you've never seen it before eventually, but while you're on this side of life, I need you to be a willing victim. Amen. That is absolutely antithetical to our personal self-preservation. Yes. 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 You don't sign up to be a victim. Come on. You don't sign up to be being abused. Come on. Man, Stovall said some stuff yesterday. I, I, I can't repeat it. But again, in, in, in my household, we've been studying and, and reading every morning the book of Jeremiah. They hated Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a word for their wounds. He had the answer to their sickness. He had the panacea to their disease. And they could not stand him. Yeah, he still became a willing victim for their cause. Here Jeremiah is preaching. Next thing you know, Jeremiah turns around. They're trying to stick him in the penitentiary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come because on, he's responding preach, preach. to their needs. Yeah. Here he is. He is a willing victim. He even gets to a point and says, well, well, I'm victimized on such a deep level here. I'm going to stop preaching. And then he almost exploded. He said, this word is like a fire. Shut up in my phone. It is perpetual. It does not. It does not stop. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. We probably could just stop on that mm -hmm. and just and just marinate and process mm -hmm. collectively or even privately about what it means to be a willing victim. Yeah. That goes against our norm. Come on. That goes against the natural response of our body. Great. I'm going to let you hmm. somehow, some way, victimize me. Mm -hmm. Somehow I'm literally going to turn the other cheek. Now, I'm not, this is not talking about signing up for, for, for physical abuse and all of that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We know that that happened, though. Mm -hmm. oh. A living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God. So God says, no, I, I, I get it. But I'm telling you that for you to sign up and become a willing sacrifice and victim, it is acceptable unto me. Then we have to harmonize all the, all the elements that, that, that coincide with that, that God will not place on you more. Come on now. Then you can handle it. Yeah. Oftentimes when we're complaining about our victimization or being a sacrifice, we can handle it. We just don't want. Yeah. Yeah. So it becomes, again, something that's more about comfort. It's a whole different, a whole different sermonic series, and we kind of already covered that. But our world, our, especially this, this American nation, is, is, is rooted in a need for comfort. Yeah. Yes. It is rooted in, a, that's, that's why our drug addictions yeah. mm. are so out of control. Our food addictions are so out of control yeah. because we, we always need to be in a state where we are seen. Yeah. 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 So it is absolutely yeah. against what it means to be a living sacrifice because I don't want to be a living sacrifice. That's painful. I need to do something that will make me feel good. God said, well, if you're, if you're in that mindset where you understand everything is not always going to feel good, he says, it is acceptable unto me. Mm -hmm. So now we, we spent the time talking about the, 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 the removal of the veil. Mm -hmm. yeah. The removal of the veil is the beginning of this particular process where we are now. The veil had to be removed so that you and I can understand that we have the capacity to be sacrificial. But if he didn't remove the veil, then we couldn't lift the lid. Right. And when I say, oh, I can't take this, is that true? Come on. Because right. you're taking it on your job. Come on, preach. Uh, you're preach. taking preach. it in the classroom. Preach. Yeah. You took it on the street when come that on, unfortunate on. incident took place. How come you didn't go off on them? How come you didn't quit on them? How come you didn't punch him in the face? How come you didn't cuss him out? Now when it comes to God, oh, I can't do this. I'm not going to do that. You will be a victim for who you want to be a victim preach. for. Yeah. Then God says, I need you to be a sacrifice. 
sacrificial victim for me and for my cause, and I really have your back. Most of the people we are victim to don't have our back. And we don't complain about it. We find a way to get it done. Then when it comes to God, come on now. I'm back to needing comfort. I'm back to needing luxury. I, I, I said that, that, that quote uh, from, from one, of our, one of our middle school principals that said, uh, uh, it stopped me in my tracks. We were going through our circle process, and, and, and as she checked in, she said, uh, comfort, comfort is a beautiful thing. It's a, even a blissful thing, but nothing grows there. You're right. Woo, you're so, right. be comfortable. But just know nothing productively right. You're right. That's right. You're comes right. out of comfort. You're right. Comfort is what comes after struggle. Come on yeah. now, preach. I don't know comfort if I've never yeah. experienced pain. Yeah. So all I want to do is exist in comfort. I'm not going to grow because without pain, I can't grow. Yeah. 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 So if you find someone that wants to exist in comfort, you will find someone I don't get me started that's going from 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 job to job, from school to school, from church to church, from relationship to relationship, from that to that, because they're always looking for comfort, and the minute the pressure sets in, yeah. they need to break out of camp. Yeah. Yeah. But those that can deal with some victimization every now and then, yeah. oh, those are the ones with some staying power, yeah. because they've learned that this too is part of the journey. Yeah. Yeah. Service. 
It's not your deep and out of the box service. Let me tell you something. It is not deep for a child to do what his father says. Amen. 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 That is considered normal. Regardless of the task, if the task that is being asked the, the, the child to do is, 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 is fruitful, is noteworthy, is productive, I'm not talking about something that's damaging and counterproductive. I'm talking about a father who loves his child and only makes requests. Now we know all of us were children at one point. Some of us, some, some in the room still are, but, but a, a true parent has never asked their child to do something that would bring harm or danger to them, but the child on the other side feels like that's all the parents do. Ah, ah. Oh, you just don't want me to have a life. Ah, right. You just don't understand how it is. So, so, so they hear ah. what the father or mother is giving to them as, as, as something that's just a burden. Ah. Ah. But when you understand that it's nothing but love, how is it deep for a child to do ah. what daddy said? Yeah. Do. That's not deep. Yeah. So God says, this whole concept and process of being a living sacrifice is your reasonable service. He's saying for you to listen to me. It's your reasonable service. Now, we know that the Greek word there for, for service sometimes is, is translated in whichever Bible uh, version, you're, version you're reading is sometimes trans, translated as worship. Reasonable service, reasonable worship, Greek word is latria. This is not proskuneo. It's not what we say we do when we come together on the first day of the week perspective. This is some of the stuff we're trying to work out slowly during our PM uh, service because you, you will hear uh, a lot about uh, well, latria is the daily lifestyle of worship. I agree. But... I'm also under the assumption now that proskuneo is also part of the daily yeah. lifestyle. Amen. I don't only engage in proskuneo when these doors open. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Uh, I don't only engage in proskuneo when, when, the, when the collective body comes together on the first day of the week. Seriously? Oh, now, so we understand the tria is, is, is this, this, this acceptable will worship or this acceptable will or service that God says it is reasonable. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if I'm complaining, and you, we do, come on. Yeah, we do. Come on. Yeah. So if I'm complaining about being a child of God, I'm going against God because God says what I'm asking you to do is reasonable. Right. Yeah. Now, now so here, here's, here's the piece. Look, accept one to God, which is your reasonable service. Now, based upon the, the, the audience from an expository perspective, Paul was speaking to an audience that apparently understood something about the Levitical priesthood. Because this word, this word service here uh, also deals with Levitical priesthood service. It's a Greek word that also points back to how, how those of the tribe of Levi had to spend their time taking care of the temple, taking care of the tabernacle, making sure all of the sacrificial things were in place, that the high priest entered into the Holy of Holies, that the other priests went to the Holy of Holies, all of that different stuff. This was there back then. God is saying that was their reasonable service. It was the high priest's reasonable service. Not burdensome service, not out of the box service to walk into the Holy of Holies once a year and offer sacrifices based upon the Yom Kippur or the Great Day of Atonement. He says it was their reasonable service to make sure that the shoe bread was, was always there and, and properly in place and that after a certain amount of days it was their reasonable service to go in and eat some of the shoe bread and then take that shoe bread out and replace, replace it with a, a, a new set of 12 loaves of, of shoe bread. He says it was their reasonable service to make sure that, that the candles remain lit all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year. It was their reasonable service to make sure the lampstands always burn. It was their reasonable service to 
to make sure that the incense were always burning so that there was always a sweet smelling savor when you walked into the place where God dwelt. He says this was their reasonable service, but now he's talking to some New Testament Christians and he says your reasonable servant is to be a living sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. He says I don't care about the shoe bread anymore. I don't care about a candle burning anymore. He says now I need you to be bread. I need you to be a candle. I need you to be a sweet smelling savor unto me. And you start that by becoming your own little living sacrifice, offering your own self up to me. Amen. Amen. He says that's your reasonable service. Amen. So now we are the New Testament priests. But you don't walk in managing the loaves, managing the bread, managing the candles, managing the, 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 the flicker on the, on the matchstick. That's not your job. My job is to be a living sacrifice, a willing victim. As radical as that may sound, God says it's your reasonable. Reasonable, the tree. Reasonable. Daily offering of yourself to God. I wish we had time to open up with some questions, but I'm not in that space right now. So then go, go, go to verse, go to verse two. Go to verse two. Understanding that this reasonable service is all about sacred service. It is about our calling and our duty as New Testament. But then he says, I see we're not going to finish. And, and, and be not. All is still under the reasonable service context. And be not conformed to this world. In other words, it says from a Greek perspective, walk not according to the pattern or the rhythm of this world. Come on. That's a good word. That's some heavy stuff because we live in it but we're not of it. Right. But we're but but then we also find ourselves trying to exist in between all of it. Yeah. Right. You're right. Mm. There are some things we engage in. There are some things that I engage in as a Christian I have no business. You're right. We're still trying to grow out of some stuff. There are some things I have no business listening to. Yeah. There's some things I have no business watching on TV. There's something I have no business going and paying. How much is a movie? Almost twenty dollars these days. Yeah. I take my family to the movie. That's a grip. <laughs> That's a lot of money. How many is it? Six of us, something like that. Yeah. Right. So, so again, you go to the movie. There, there are some things where I should not be paying fourteen dollars. Come on, man. All right. As a victim. Yeah, yeah. Come on. As a living sacrifice. Now, now I'm not, I'm not getting all into stop door. I ain't doing that, please. But I'm telling you that the deeper, and, and this is not a new conversation, but the deeper and deeper we become a living sacrifice, the more and more we don't want to be connected to things that 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 preach and teach the pattern, not of God's world, but of this world. Right, yeah. you're right. So it's just one of those things that, that we will die trying to excommunicate more and more out of our system. But he says, while you're on this journey, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, now when we look at this, this is the best way I, I can explain it. This is the best way I can explain it. That you know, even though the process of having your mind renewed is an ongoing process, mm -hmm. no one reaches a point where, oh, I'm renewed. Mm -hmm. And then that's just it. There's no more renewed. Now we know that God, <laughs> when he blesses us and adds us to his kingdom, there's nothing more he needs to do. Like, like when, when, when you gave your life to Christ and had your sins washed away, God didn't need to come back and like come on. finish the job off a little bit later. Maybe perhaps, I, I guess, uh, I don't know, maybe there's some con contractors in the house uh, that, that have built something. And perhaps 
after laying a foundation or, or putting up some wall, putting up some brick or some mortar or, or, or something like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not a, a, a mason or a contractor or anything of that nature. But I know that there are some jobs that you do where you have to start the process and then return sometime later because something needs to dry, yeah. something needs to set, and while, okay, uh, uh, let, let's, let's, let's just make it real practical. Drain them. <laughs> you ever had a clog sink? Yes. So, and Drano works very well. So you get that Drano, you pour it in there, but it says for 15 to 30 minutes, yes. don't run any water. Because it needs, to, it needs some time. God doesn't need time. When God saved you, bam, you were saved. Nothing needed to dry. Nothing needed to set. Your sins were remitted immediately. So God, when he deals with us, he does not need to come back and do anything else. But the text says again, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, we know when we're on that track, when we begin our process of being able to differentiate our passionate relationship with God. Man, I, wish, I, I guess this might not be a good word. I, I won't use that word. If we can, we can, we can differentiate our passion and relationship with God from all of the Guiana we go through on a daily basis. Y'all yeah. know what Guiana is? Yeah. What is it? Hell. It's hell. Okay? So, so, so let's say it this way. You, we know when our mind is being renewed and that we're on the right path. Not that God needs to do anything else, but I'm still growing up into him. I am now. God has already blessed me with everything that I need, but now there's some, some, some individual maturing yes. I need to do. There's some things that I need to simply stop, stop doing. So when I learn to differentiate the passion and power and intimacy that I have with God from all of the hellacious stuff that I deal with on a daily basis, you can pretty much say you have a renewed mind. Yeah, that's true. You're in trouble when, while you're going through a, a, a hellacious time of life, that that then now points a dampened picture on your spiritual life. That means you're not really or holistically renewed because when you are renewed, the passion and the flame that burns for Christ never goes out. Amen. That's right. Amen. So Car Carlos sent me sent me a text message last last Friday, not not this most recent Friday, Friday before last. Now I was I was sitting in my office. It was almost six thirty, and I had intentionally waited for everybody to leave because some some some, some people have those kinds of jobs where you can't get your work done. Until everybody's, that, that, that's some messed up stuff, yeah. right? When you just get interrupted all day, you got your schedule and you're just putting out fires all, out all day. And then when people leave, so, so I had to clean my office out. I work in education. So we start a new school year every year. And, and, and it's normal at the end of that year to go through Come on, we got some teachers in the house, right? And it is normal to go through at the end of the year and do some spring or some summer cleaning. Right. So you can start the next school year fresh. You do not want the previous year files unless they're what you still need. Backed up at the start of the new school year. So this was two Fridays ago, and I finally was able to clean out my office from last school year. That has never happened before. I get my stuff done, go away from summer. I, got, I couldn't even get it done over the summer. That's how busy it was. So I'm sitting in there, cleaning out stuff. I got boxes of stuff. This is a shred file. This is another file. I got boxes of 
flip stuff. Now, I'm, I'm sitting there and I get this message from Carlos. He's like, how's the week? <laughs> how's the week? So I start, he, he, he opened the door, so I was able to start venting. About, I'm just now being able to. Now, in the background, I'm listening to a YouTube sermon from Tyson Moore. So I'm in my office, the word is going. I'm cleaning out my office. Carlos sends me a text. So I start explaining to him in the carnal where I am. But at the end of that statement, this is what I said. With all that said, my spirit is good and the word and presence of God bounces throughout all my being. Now here I am exhausted. Here I am tired. Here I am ready to go. That's in the carnal. Right. But in the spiritual, I'm still boiling. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When your mind is renewed, right. your disposition of being tired, yes. your disposition of being frustrated, yes. your disposition of being mad, your disposition of being angry does not put out your boiling spiritual nature. Yeah. 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 If we allow our carnal circumstances to be the determining factor hey, of how hey. we're doing spiritually, we ain't learned Christ yet. Yeah. 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 Truth. Yeah. Truth. That's how this Christian game starts. If that piece ain't differentiated yet, then one day I'm all about Jesus because I'm feeling comfortable. Come on, man. The next day, somehow, where the world knocks me upside my head, I'm not even sure how much faith I actually have in Jesus. It's right. a good word. Mm -hmm. That boiling pot of your relationship with Christ, who or what circumstance can cause that to go cold? Amen. He hasn't stopped loving. He hasn't stopped forgiving. So I have to be able to differentiate, yes, physically, carnally, my life is upside down right now, but spiritually, whoa, I can't hear the return of the Messiah. Amen. Oh, Amen. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. By the so here I am sitting steeped in stress and drama. That's why when some people ask me, Emma, how you doing? I'm a complex dude, right? So somebody might ask me, how, how am I doing? And I have to ask, it depends, it depends on what context yeah. you're talking about. Right. If you want to know how I'm doing with Jesus, oh, man, that's a fantastic relationship. <laughs> Fills me up with so much we can just talk about him all day and all night long. Yeah. Now you say, how's work? Yeah. <laughs> How, how's, and, and even the ministry can fit that. Yeah. How's the ministry? Oh, it's depressing. That has nothing to do with how intensely are you in love with Jesus yeah. Yeah. and how much he is ruling and regulating your life. Church, we got to understand the difference. Yeah. If I got a problem with, with, with this or a problem with that, and then that, that, that places the whole shadow over even my kingdom relationship with God, we have a problem. We have a problem. You, you cannot, you cannot, I cannot allow the carnal to paint the picture of what's happening in my spiritual. Church, we do it all the time. If we get that, we broke. Both. We broke. Because then we, we, we wouldn't even stop. This is for the sake of, 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 of the united body of Christ. We, we would stop the bickering. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because we would realize that the bickering does not compare to the boiling of Christ that exists within us. Right. And at that point, it is so easy for, for us to say, okay, let's just put that aside. Right. Let's just focus on how good he is. That's mm -hmm. right. That's where the concept of radical comes in. People think that's radical. No, that's being Jesus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To live is Christ. Come on, man. Yeah. To die is gain. Yeah. Do we understand how much meat is in that? He's saying to live is to be boiling. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then when you die, nothing but luxury. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. What y'all gonna do? Words. Right. How y'all gonna engage? Mm -hmm. You gonna boil? 
Or is it going to depend on how he treated you last night? Yeah, yeah. Well, you go boil, is it going to depend on how, how she spoke to you yesterday? Mm -hmm. You go boil, does it depend on how much money you have in your pocket? Mm -hmm. You can be broke with no money in your pocket. That cannot determine the boil that you have for Jesus. When Jesus is bubbling up inside you, and I'm singing songs to God, pushing that shopping cart. Right. Right. Yeah. Then God turns around and gives me a few cards. Yeah, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. Just be. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know people probably say stuff about that. Why he got that many cards? Do you know when I didn't have one, people used to talk bad about me in the church? About me. Now that I got more than one to talk about. Right. How does it go? I don't deal with moving targets. Right. They like you this way, and you switch up. They don't like it. Doesn't matter. That's right. When 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 I, when I prayed for several years that God would bless me with with just a small amount of time to be able to go to school without having to work. And God worked out a situation where, based upon an injury I endured, He gave me ten thousand dollars. And then when that was gone, God gave, God gave me another 10. So it gave me a year and a half, or almost two years, actually a year, to go to school and not work. I prayed for that. People in the church, he ain't got no job. You gotta watch, tell him my wife, I don't know if you should be with him. He don't have it. Appreciate that. 
That's so right. much. Now, now again, he says, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable. Look, church, yes. You ask me if I'm crazy, yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, sir. I'm crazy for Jesus. Amen. It. Somebody does me wrong, I don't have to get them back. I pray for them because I know my father is about to run something by him. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and talk. Go ahead and mistreat children of God. Yeah. What you're doing is mistreating yourself. That's right. Because it, look, it is a divine premise and principle. What goes around will come around. Yeah. In other words, you don't like that one? We yeah. reap what we sow. Yeah. 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 That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That word will in the Greek is thalame. Thalame. This is, and if you need deeper information, talk to Brother Pat. But, but this, is, this is God's expectation for us. God has a will that is connected to what he intends for us All right. to do. All right. And that he intends for us to experience. Mm -hmm. But it depends on how we engage it. We'll determine if what God hopes for us becomes a reality in our life. Amen. Just because God hopes for you to be blessed doesn't mean that you and I will be blessed. Right. Because if I don't bless back the blessor with a radical glorification and magnification that exudes my very existence, then he cannot bless me as the blessor because I, as his child, I am not blessing back the blessor. Amen. So he intends, he intends for all of us to be blessed. That's his will. But if we don't act out in accordance to make his will reality in our life, his will for your life or my life just sits on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And it's not that he can't. It's that he will not because there's no reciprocity in the relationship. Every parent understands that. You won't just give your children everything they want. Every now and then, they got to earn some stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying you can earn salvation. Right. But God says it would be irresponsible for me yeah. to just bless you with a land flowing with milk and honey. And you don't even show me that you can be disciplined. You don't even show me that you can love me. You don't even show me that you can worship me. But now you want me to bless you with more blessings that you would ever be able to uphold and maintain in your life. He says, I will set you up for disaster. That's right. Amen. I'm sure you know something. All right. yeah. That everything they have, many of the things that they have, it was just given to them. Yeah. 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 Yes. They're spoiled brats. Yes. That's right. They get a splitter and life is over. That's right. the, the, the most trivial, trivial of things take place and because they've never had to go through deep forms of pain and, and, and stress and, and strain that the minute one small thing, you and I would say, what? That's it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's back to the whole moat and beam. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So here, in perfect will of God, this is the will God hopes for us. He hopes that we get it. He hopes that we have it and live it out. But regardless of God's Thalaman, which will sit on a shelf, if we don't engage, he says, seek you therefore the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. He never said, check it out, y'all. I created you, so you're going to get all of this stuff. He says, seek me first. That's right. And my righteousness. That's right. Then my failure will be evident mm -hmm. in your life. Amen. Here's the backside though. Thaler may can sit on the shelf. We may, we may, we may never get to experience it. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Because we don't engage him. Preach. Amen. Preach. Bola man. is going to happen no matter what. So this ain't one of those situations where you say, well, 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 God, I didn't take you up on the offer of becoming one of your children. So therefore, in the end, just let your wrath bypass me. As if the wrath would only apply to someone who signed up. God has divine will that is going to happen from a Bolivar perspective, and no one can alter it. All right. Whether I believe in God or not, his Bolivar is going to take place. Whether I believe in him or not, every knee is still going to back. So it's not about, well, but God, I, I, I remember God, I said I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to be part of the church. So I thought that was my way of saying, so just leave me alone. He's like, no, but, I, but I, I put that out there because it's what you need, and it's how I'm going to rescue you from this other divine wrath that I must execute yeah. upon all those who choose not to follow after ah, my will. So, so, so be radical or else. Or else. Be about glorifying God. Or else. Now, here we go. So, so, so. Romans 9, 9, 17. We're almost done. I, there, there's a whole second half to this. We're not even going to get you. I guess we'll, we'll, we'll start there. Next Lord's Day. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Verse 18, therefore, have the mercy on whom he will, that's not Bolomay right there, on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardened. Some heavy stuff in there. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Thou wilt say, thou wilt say then unto me, why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his bowling? Or who has resisted his will? I can resist God's failing. Mm -hmm. I cannot do anything to resist his bullet. Mm -hmm. is a blessing to us. You engage me, he says, you're going to be hooked up. Mm -hmm. Not everything is going to be comfortable, but you will have divine protection. Mm -hmm. But what nobody can alter is the fact that one day, Jesus Christ is coming back. Mm -hmm. And when he comes back, he's going to separate the sheep from the goats. That is a definite dynamic that will occur and nobody can change that. You can say, God is dead all you want. Come on now. That doesn't change his divinity. It does not change his bone. Church, we're going we're gonna to end right there. We were supposed to get into uh, some additional stuff, but I'm not even going to give that to you. We'll, we'll, we'll end with this. Next, next Lord's Day, God willing, we're going we're gonna to start with this glorification and magnification aspect that first of all starts with us as male and female. Mm -hmm. That the first level of glory and magnification God wants from us is in our own human existence based upon our role. That's first. So imagine if every, not every married man, every married woman, or every engaged person, or every single, what if just every single individual, every man, lived out the process and the concept of glorification and magnification?
as a male. And then every female. Because all of that other stuff comes later. What do I do if I'm not married? Right. What do I do if I'm not a mother? Jesus was 12. So there is supposed to be some glorification and magnification that simply starts with the essence of my existence. Right. Y'all looking at me strange. <laughs> Here was a, a text message Tanya's cousin wrote that died uh, on August the 25th in a car accident that said he fell asleep at the wheel driving back from Los Angeles. But here's a text message that he sent on February the 2nd at 2.43 a.m. God, I recognize that I have not lived my life for you up until now. I've been living for myself, and that is wrong. I need you in my life. I want you in my life. I acknowledge the completed work of your son, Jesus Christ, in giving his life for me on the cross at Calvary. And I long to receive the forgiveness you have made freely available to me through this sacrifice. This is the grandson of evangelist Lee Henderson. He says, come into my life now, Lord. He's baptized. Take up residence in my heart and be my king, my Lord, and my Savior. From this day forward, I will no longer be controlled by sin or the desire to please myself, but I will follow you all the days of my life. Those days are in your hands. I ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Then he says to his mother, I'm going to start saying this every night. I've been stressing on too much on what I want to do instead of what I, what I need to do. And I realize that I think that's going to help me change my ways and sleep better and get through life. I love you and dad and I really can't stress it enough as I hold back my tears of all the years I've been a problem child. You guys made me realize the only love you need is really from people that you care for. And I want to thank you both Love you guys so much. I hope Jaleel, my son, and I can be as great as you guys who sacrificed so much for us. I'll be there in the a.m. Love you guys. Amen. And when he wrote that, he had no idea when his life would come to an end. But on August the 25th, it came to an end. What's your message? Have you written yours yet? Or are you still waiting? Well, God, I'm still trying to determine if I'm going to really be sold out. I still got this boyfriend that I'm not ready to quite shake yet. But this girlfriend that keeps calling me. I can't she's still in my system. Are you waiting? Or are you waiting for God? We don't know when God's calling us home. We have no idea. But when he does, to God be the glory. He catches you and I. Boy. Boiling for him. When he returns, we're probably going to be steeped in problems. He's not coming back for that. He's coming back to get his vessel. To live with him in all of eternity. There might be someone here that's not a member of God's kingdom. You know, at this point, you already know what you need to do. It's about hearing God's word, believing it, repenting of all your, your <coughs> past sins and, and wicked ways, confessing uh, the sweetest name of the mortal tongue and being baptized in the water. That's how it starts. But you have to have that certain type of faith that says, <coughs> regardless of what everybody else does, I'm rolling with Jesus. 